What's going on, Titans fans? Welcome to Titan Up Today. It's your boy CD back again with another episode. Actually, another season. It's season two for us, episode one. I'm hyped up. Football season's finally here. No preseason. Just have to jump head first in to the deep, to the deep end. I'm not scared. I know you're not scared. I'm ready for it, even though we do have to wait an additional day for Monday Night Football. But it is prom time, so I'll let that slide. But I'm hyped up to get a, get on the field with these Broncos. That's what we need to get. Turn this page from 2019 and get on to 2020. But what we will do today, we'll talk about that transition from 19 to 20, what this new team looks like, the losses, the gains, the depth chart now that we got a 53-man roster. What does it look like, these breakout players that we're talking about? that the media is talking about, what stars do we have or what personnel do we have that has something to prove, show us, show the coaches, any scouts for any future teams that they want to play on. We'll discuss that. We'll also talk about some injuries that came up. And finally, i give you guys like a quick breakdown of what, is, what does this look like season two moving forward with Titan Up Today. What can you expect from us and what um, you can um, see us bringing into you for 2020 and hopefully beyond. But no need to delay. Season two of T Tighten Up Today, episode one, starts now. All right, welcome back. So, the transition, 2019 to 2020. The best thing I can say, the best way I can describe the end of our season was bittersweet, or just the entire season was bittersweet. It was up and down from the word go. As soon as we kicked off in week one, wins and losses, Marcus Mariota's our quarterback, stick behind him, Ryan Tannehill in the wing, just waiting. The Broncos game, taking over, doing some big things for winning, getting on a run, the passing game opening up, the running game. The winter, once it got cold, number 22 started to run. You can start to see this team grow. We went, took off, got to the playoffs. They'll say that we had two upset victories. I'd argue, and anybody I spoke to for months leading up to that, I thought that we could beat any team in the league. The only team in which I still believe that we should have beat that Chiefs team, we just – misplayed at that <sighs> Pat Mahomes run at halftime right before half there was a lot of little things that we just gave up but not going to go too deep into that again transitioning bittersweet because at the end of the day whenever we first kicked off before the season started we were hoping for big things after week four we were kind of questioning to be fair I think that we had a team that was good enough to do some things but we didn't know what they were doing they were all over the place but that was the bitter part. The sweet part is we went far and we saw some things and we see the AFC Championship game that we hadn't seen in a very, very long time. Turning that page, 2020 now. This team, scary. Scary to say the least. And we know, I don't, I'm a firm believer in not winning and losing so much, but winning and learning. What do we do know about that old team that is now a lot of that core that we have? of this new team is that we can run the ball on anybody in the league. We know tough defense, it doesn't matter. If we want to dig our heels in and run, we can do that. Obviously, with the best running back in the league, Derrick Henry, that O-line finally gelled together about week four, week five, I'm sorry, about week five, week six, when we finally started to take over um, and move the ball at will. We know that we can run the ball, which is a positive. Our defense is elite, and we know that we can hang in with any of the big teams, like when they say the big boys, I think that we are one of the big boys. And actually, the power rankings right now, when I looked um, earlier today, it shows us as number five. I mean, obviously, there's a million different power rankings, but top five in the league, um, third in the AFC. I, I'll take that um, preseason rankings any day of the week, but still some things to come up. But I will say, as we turn that page, right? There's going to be some gains. There's also some losses. And to be fair, there's a big loss for me. I think Delaney Walker was huge. Um, he's gone. He had a great career with us, but it's time for him to move on. He's definitely older. And we have um, that face in Johnny Smith that we picked up in the draft 
few years back, and we're going to give him the keys to this car and let him let him work um, from the tight end position. But again, losses. So we can say Marcus Mariota loss. I feel like. Anybody who knows me knows that Marcus Mario's got a special place in my heart, man. I've loved that dude, especially playing Madden. But anyways, but I love that guy on and off the field. He's a good dude. Um, I feel like we didn't kind of give him a fair shake, um, the proper shake that he could have had. But um, it's done. He's moved on. He's released. Now he's with the, the Las Vegas Raiders. Deion Lewis is gone. Ryan Suckup. I don't even know what happened with him. He had a great season, multiple seasons with us. And then all of a sudden he just disappeared last year, obviously with injuries, but he just never came back and was never really true um, to kicking the ball. Speaking of kicking the ball, Greg Joseph, I thought he was going to be our guy. We cut him, but we did upgrade. I will say that. Um, Cameron Wake, another disappointment for me. We put picked him up, spent a lot of money for him to come out there for a season, and uh, he got injured early. Never saw him. Jarrell Casey, we traded him to the Broncos, which we'll be seeing him on Monday night. Um, Reggie Gilbert, we also know is a backup um, outside linebacker. Had some good plays towards down the stretch whenever we needed them, when we had some injury issues. Um, Dalen Dawkins as well, um, it was released. But these guys gone, no issues, because what you lose, you gain in return. So what do we gain? I would say our first signing, didn't know who he was, Ty Sembrillo, tackle. Now we got him. He's just going to be a backup, a fill-in to kind of beef up um, are already very, very nice offensive line. Uh, we also got Vic Beasley. I was hyped, hyped up. I still am hyped up to see him come over. I've loved him since he's played over um, with Atlanta. Very athletic edge guy. Um, help out Harold Landry. I'm like, all right, perfect. We got Jeffrey Simmons. We got Jarrell Casey at that point. Um, this offensive, I'm sorry, our defense is going to start to look really good at defensive front. Then we added Jack Crawford. Jack Crawford, older guy, sure had been around the league for a while, but had a great season last year as well. And like, just like that, that three four front is starting to beef up even more. Jonathan Joseph, in the back end, we did lose Logan Ryan. You will be lost, or sorry, you will be missed. I forgot to mention that, but he's gone. I, I don't understand that. I feel like he still had a lot of talent, and that we could have maybe kept him on the squad. But bigger things, he wanted too much money. He had to go. Jeff Swam. He's gone. He's oh, I'm sorry. He's now with us as a, um, as a tight end. Steven Goskowski, ex-Patriot, coming over to kick balls for us. I now firmly believe that we have the best special teams unit in football with Brett Kern, which is argu now arguably, hands down, the best punter. And then now Steven Goskowski, solid top five kicker in the league. Um, he's shown that, makes some big kicks over his time. We got Sonoris Perry, Derek Robertson, um, Aaron Brewer, um, the center. Again, more beef for us on the line. But the biggest, actually, I'll just wait. I'll come back to that. Isaiah Wilson is a rookie that we drafted. He's currently got some COVID issue. We'll talk about that whenever we get to injuries. Christian Fulton, Dar um, Darrington, Evans at running back, the rookie who's made the team. Fulton obviously made the team as well. Merchant. I'm sorry, Merchinson and um, Chris Jackson, as well as um, Jadavian Clowney. Yes, the sign that we just got just a couple days ago. He's on the squad. We, I've been waiting this whole time to get him. Where does he go? I don't even know how this even works. We have everybody because now Vic Beasley kind of goes into the wind. We don't really talk about him too much, but we can now have Jadavian Clowney with his hand on the ground or coming off the edge with Vic Beasley and Harold Landry is still there doing massive things. And when you have Jeffrey Simmons doing what Jeffrey Simmons was doing towards the end of the season, I think that we have the best front seven in the game. Again, you got Jay, Jay on Brown is still there. He hasn't gone anywhere. I think that we got a monster of a team, monster of a team on the defensive side. I wouldn't be surprised if we pitch a couple shutouts this year. But moving along, um, what can we expect? From this year, obviously the defense is beefed up significantly with that signing of Jadavian Clowney, um, and Jonathan Joseph gonna be playing the nickel, um, the nickel cornerback position. But I think the simple answer is a little more. We can expect a little bit more than last year. The reason why I said that, the main reason why I said it is because the core, our group core, our our core group um, is still here. 
We have the same O-line. Um, I say the same O-line. We're missing Jack Conklin. He's gone now. But um, Dennis Kelly, he basically played. He basically started 16 games just by moving all across the line. He's always been a utility guy. Um, but he's on the line. He knows how to, how to, um, to work with this group. Like They're all tight. Saffold, Lawan, Nate Davis, Ben, everybody's there that's been there last year. No issues. The defensive front, a little bit, a couple changes or whatever, but the secondary is basically the same all the way around. Adoree, Malcolm, um, Vaccaro, as well as the best safety, the best free safety in the league, Kevin Byard, our captain. We have so many pieces. We're running the same schemes. We don't have these major movements coming in, a brand new offensive coordinator, so we don't have that. We have Ryan Tannehill coming in, the best running back in the game coming in, wide receivers growing every single year. I think that we can expect better. So what's better than showing up to the AFC Championship game and taking a loss? The worst case scenario is winning the AFC Championship game and putting us in the Super Bowl. Best case scenario is winning that second game after that, which is in the Super Bowl, first Sunday in February. I think that we got a lot of things to work with. Um, our team is set up right now to do something we haven't done since 2008. So long. Win the AFC South. It seems so simple. We find our way into the playoffs with a 9-7 and seven record. I think that we do something much bigger than that. A big splash play here where we can win the division, maybe get home field advantage, and do something special. Win a couple games on I'm sorry, win a couple home games in the playoffs instead of having to win them on the road. Road Warriors are nice, it's fun, it's very exciting, but an easy road would be or easy road would be really nice this time around. So to do something like this, to have that good AFC championship win to the Super Bowl, we need somebody to break out, some players to break out. So who are our breakout players? Obviously, if you watch ESPN or any sports network or read a newspaper or anything at all, read a newspaper anyways, read a blog whatever, it's going to tell you A.J. Brown is the breakout player. He's going to be this guy. I personally have different thoughts. I think A.J. Brown is a phenomenal athlete. I think he's all these things that are that we need in a wide receiver that any NFL wide receiver would need. I think the issue could be um, that it's his sophomore year, and he's going to be drawing some different coverage he wasn't looking for. But I still think that he's going to come and do something significant. 1,000-yard receiver last year, I think that we can do that again, maybe even put some more on that. But another breakout player for us is Jonu Smith. Again, the keys to the car, he has it. He can do whatever he wants now. He's fat. We put him at wide receiver, running back, fullback, obviously tight end as well. He plays all over the place. He's fast. He's athletic. He can catch the ball. When I say fast, I'm talking about fast running away from folks. We've seen a couple plays. He's actually on the intro as well, um, making an athletic catch on the outside and um, for a touchdown. Adoree Jackson, been around. We drafted him in the first round a couple years, a few years back now. Um, he's now a vet. We're ready for him to, to jump out and be a shutdown type corner. We got Malcolm Butler, who was hurt last year. We lost him midseason, but now... Here we are. Let's let's step up and show. Let's show us that you're that guy. That you're the shutdown corner, the number one corner, not the number two, not the one B or the one A, but you are our cornerback. You have an opportunity to do that this year. Jeffrey Simmons, sophomore year. I think it's a little bit different whenever you're talking about the D line. Not taking anything away from him, but it's a little bit more brute, pushing guys around. Um, it's not so much reading what's going on um, pre-snap and whatnot. Obviously moving moving the offensive lineman around and reading that, that's that's different from a mental standpoint. But I think that he's just going to be healthier because obviously he started the season on the IR last year. But he's going to be healthier this year and grow um, in our scheme and be able to do some big things. Something to prove? Number one, I, I'd argue number one player in the league with something to prove this year is Corey Davis. And I do believe that he's going to prove it. The reason why I say he has something to prove we didn't pick up his fifth-year option. He was drafted fifth overall. We've never drafted a wide receiver higher. I think that Marcus Mariota, growing pains, offensive coordinator switching, and head coach, which is a lot of stuff that was going on. He kind of got caught in the, in the mix. Injuries with his foot, his toe, throughout his career. 
this is the season that he needs to say, hey, everybody's talking about A.J. Brown, the sophomore. He's a great receiver, but I'm the guy who was drafted fifth overall, and I'm going to do the big things for our team. I'm thinking that he's going to be able to do that, and he's going to have something to prove for us. Another guy, Adam Humphreys, we first guy taken last year, the big money guy that we brought in as a wide receiver, the slot guy is going to do all that damage to help. He was kind of ghost at times. He did make a great crucial catch in the Chiefs regular season game to get us a dub. But I need to see more. I want to see 10 catch games, something crazy like that to get, to keep the chains moving. We need to see that and, and let us know that that money was well spent on a, on a great player. Again, I'll bring up Dennis Kelly. Dennis Kelly, you haven't had a, like a legitimate starting role since you've been in the league. You got it now. Anchoring the right side, the right tackle. Give us 16 games or longer with the playoffs and Super Bowl. Give us all you got and show us that you got something. Or so show us that you're worthy. Malcolm Butler, you're my last guy. Um, you were hurt last year. We paid a ton of money for you to come in a couple years back. Um, some people say it was too much. Um, I tended to agree, to be fair. Uh, that said, you've been burnt a ton. And then you show these flashes of like, Greatness. I need that Super Bowl interception, Malcolm Butler, every play, every game this season. You can't take any plays off, but I would say it's something to prove because, again, a lot of money spent and um, with new rookie brought in Christian Fulton as well as Adoree coming up on time to get signed or trying to get re-signed. It's definitely time for you to show something in as you're coming to, um, as you're coming towards the end of your career um, of, of age. So. Week one, injuries, quickly, I only got two names for you, Isaiah Wilson, and it's not so much injury, but he's on the COVID list, um, the, I don't know if the injured reserve, uh, injured COVID list, whatever it is, he's on that right now, he's been on and off of it already in this offseason as well. I think a big loss for us, Dane Crookshank, right now it's undisclosed, his injury, but he's on the IR, um, he could come back later on, but by far one of our best specialists, um, made some good plays especially on fake punts um, and a block punt. I'm sorry, a block field goal last year. An official list comes out today, so you'll be able to get some information from me later on today or um, first thing tomorrow. But um, tighten up today. Season two, what does it look like? So in the most part, you're going to get the same stuff, same fun and passionate, hopefully fun, funny from time to time, passionate CD. We give you weekly Pick up challenge with myself, um, a few of my or a couple of my friends. You you guys recall Lund, A Town. They'll still be here, but I added a couple more. My sister, she's gonna be along with me. Courtney and another good friend of mine, Jake Witt. He'll be on um, putting in his picks as well. So expect that. We'll actually start a little bit of that today because obviously kickoff is um, tonight with the Chiefs and Texans. So I want to engage the communication with you guys. If that's just writing back and forth um, through, the, through the, um, the comments, the chat, hit me up. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. And I help you out um, and try to make this thing as best as possible. Obviously, I'll give you injury reports, your weekly previews, recaps, immediate post-game reaction. I'm going to be giving that. I want to do some live stuff as well at some point in time. Expect that. But again... Feedback, feedback, feedback. Let me know what you want or what you don't want, and I'll, I'll try to provide. I'm open to suggestions. Um, and before we close the books on episode one, I do have some predictions for you. All right, so as you can see, this year we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we have in the past. Um, along with the weekly pick and pull that we'll be doing with the five of us, we'll also be doing Super Bowl predictions. So the Super Bowl prediction is for week one, but we'll also pick this up as a midterm Super Bowl prediction. So we'll do this, kind of update these, depending on what the situation is, and also do a final Super Bowl prediction for the playoffs. So as you can see, A-Town showing the Kansas City Chiefs as the AFC representative playing his own 49ers as the 49ers become the Super Bowl champions. This is his prediction. Brightside, a.k.a. Lund, he has the Ravens going to the Super Bowl to play his own Aints and the Aints winning the championship. I have us, the Tennessee Titans, winning the AFC, representing and going to um, the Super Bowl, playing the Green Bay Packers. 
with the Green Bay Packers taking a loss to us and we finally getting our first Super Bowl championship. Courtney, my sister, she says Kansas City and they'll be playing against Seattle with Seattle and Russell Wilson winning that championship. Jake Witt, good friend of mine, he's a Kansas City Chiefs fan, so it doesn't really matter what he says. Nonetheless, he has Kansas City to win the AFC and the NFC represented being Minnesota with Kansas City going back to back. All right, so now that you have the predictions for the season, here's our predictions for tonight's game. So, Houston Texans, Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs are currently favored by nine points, over under set at 54. I think 31 17, the Chiefs pull it out. As you can see, here's the rest of what these fools think. We'll see it as we update the standings throughout the entire season. But for right now, I got to close this out with one question Why tighten up tomorrow? when you can tighten up today.